Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you see me? No, oh, I, I can't see you yet. There we go. Oh, nice to meet you. You're nice appearing. To meet you. How are you're, you? you're appearing as. And. Apologies. <laughs> that's my, that's my, I'm on my assistant's laptop. It's two days since the Daily Telegraph started publishing WhatsApp messages from Matt Hancock's phone, but the former health secretary has found time to jump onto a job interview with Su Yon Lee, the vice president of external affairs at South Korean firm Hanson Consulting. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. How about you, sir? Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. It's been oh. quite a busy week. What Mr. Hancock doesn't know is that Hanson Consulting doesn't actually exist. It has no clients, no money and no staff. And Su Yon Lee is an undercover reporter. I'm Anthony Barnett and for many years I've been investigating the financial interests of politicians of all main parties. I was approached by Led by Donkeys to help them conduct an experiment after the recent scandals over MPs and their second jobs. In the middle of a cost of living crisis when people need their MPs more than ever, would a serving member of parliament still consider taking a job furthering the interests of a foreign company on top of their constituency duties? And how much would they want to be paid? It's not against parliamentary rules for an MP to take a second job, or a third, or a fourth job, nor is it against the rules for them to work for a foreign company. And there are no limits on what they can earn and how much time they can spend. And maybe that's the problem. Certainly, a clear majority of the public think it's wrong for serving MPs to also work for a private company. Talk turns to the pandemic. And we even had curfews. Yes, yes. We had a curfew for a while. It didn't work. Well, so these, these boundary issues, as we called them, uh -huh. was one of the biggest problems that we, uh, the complications, because when you bring in rules like that at relatively short notice, of course, there were all sorts of complicated rules. There was one day when the Home Secretary was on the radio and asked, OK, so if you can socialise with somebody else in, a, in your garden, but you don't, you, you've got to go through the house to get to the garden, uh, are you allowed to go to the loo? I mean, and... You know, uh, uh, the answer in law was yes, but you weren't allowed to, quote, linger. <laughs> well, what does it mean to linger in the loop? Well, I mean, it, it, so we, so all these, these sort of boundary issues did become a massive point of contention because, you know, uh, they were, they were extremely difficult to set because the state is just not, has never had such exactly, um, exactly. level of intervention in people's lives. Mr Hancock faced widespread criticism for going on I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Even Rishi Sunak said he was outraged at that, throwing Hancock out of the Conservative Parliamentary Party. I've been very clear that I was very disappointed with the decision he made. I think there's lots for us all to be getting on with at this time. Sunak stripped Hancock of the Tory whip and the former Health Secretary announced he would be standing down as an MP at the next election. However, Mr Hancock told us he had time to help our fake company while still a member of parliament. So um, the first question is, I have it written down. So how does it work with you as being a member of parliament? How much time are you, would you be available to give us? Yeah, so uh, the, um, the parliament sits about half of the year mm -hmm. um, on, very predictable, on a very predictable cycle. Um, and obviously when it's uh, sitting that's my primary responsibility um and when it's not i also have responsibilities to continue to serve my constituents but not as intensively um and so and there are rules specifically to allow for people to have uh, outside experience okay. um and um we would it would, would obviously be very important to follow both the letter and the spirit of those of those rules uh but that is that's absolutely fine, and I'm quite well used to deal with, dealing with that. That would be that is straightforward. So, for in order for something like six meetings a year, that is that would not be a problem. Okay, I mean, but sometimes, like with six meetings being in person, you might need to fly out of the country, and one of them is obviously going to be held in South Korea. So, we sure. want to make sure that you can make time for it. It might be about yes. a couple of few days in and out. So. Just wanted to yeah. make sure of that. And yes. we tell Mr. Hancock we might also need him for one off meetings and ask him how much he wants to be paid. Okay, I'll put a note down over here. 
But um, apart from that, we may also request one-off meetings as well because sometimes sure. we need to make the call at the spot for some pressing issues that we like to make at the moment. So in that case, yeah. would you also be available for those as well? Well, on Zoom, no, no problem at all. Okay. I mean, yeah. if it happens in person, then we can work it well, out. Then it's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, it depends on the. It depends on what you'd be asking for in terms of level of commitment and what the uh, and what we'd agree on that basis. But okay. but in principle, no problem. So, we would like to also talk about arrangement of fees because yeah. we want to make sure that we pay the right level for the right person. Yeah. And so we were we were wondering, do you have a daily rate? At the moment, no, I do, I do. Yes, it's ten thousand sterling. Ten thousand sterling. Okay, pounds mm -hmm. as a daily rate. And just to put note on our one-off meetings, I need to put down a number for hourly rates as well. Do you have any right. hourly rates? Well, that we you could have we could have you get the sense of the of the level, and we could have a discussion about that. Okay, I mean, hourly rates. Maybe, I mean, do you have any number in mind that we were thinking? Um, well, it, it, around 1500. 1500? 1, yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. We tell Mr. Hancock we'll be in London this spring and ask him if he can help set up some meetings. He offers to open up his contacts book of business connections for us, but stresses his stick by parliamentary rules about approaches to ministers. Would it be possible for you to set up a meeting? I mean, to help us set up some meetings? Uh, potentially, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'd have to we'd talk about what you'd be looking for, and um, but with business contacts, yes. Business contact. Do you think it'll be? It will be possible to set up a couple of meetings with anyone in government or officials as well. Um, it would. It wouldn't be one of the rules until. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the rules as a sitting MP is that I wouldn't be able to directly lobby. Okay. I would be able to advise you on who you could approach. Okay. That um, sounds about right. But I wouldn't right. be able to do that directly myself. Then the job interview wraps up. So, yeah. we'll be in touch. So. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, yeah. sir. Very good to meet you. Very good to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. So we had another senior politician interested in joining our International Advisory Board from April. A spokesperson for Matt Hancock said, This failed attempt at entrapment in fact shows Matt acting within the letter and the spirit of the rules, making it crystal clear from the outset that his parliamentary and constituency duties are his primary responsibility for now. Matt is leaving Parliament at the next election, so it's entirely to be expected that he should have exploratory conversations in the meantime.